This movie has a great heart, too, and it's very funny. David Kep, who wrote the screenplay, he wrote a movie like they really don't make that many movies like this anymore, where uh, there's a great heroic character. There are a lot of interesting uh, um, people around him and a very powerful, exotic kind of a villain. And all of it moves along with a really interesting pace. So um, I, uh, when I read the script, I, I said to myself, I have to be in this movie. That line, when you take that line, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men, the shadow knows, and that, uh, because he really does know. He's not some uh, boy scout who decided to put on some costume and go out and fight crime. Not that there's anything against those people that did that. But um, he, he's been there. He's done some pretty terrible things, and he's lived a pretty... Uh, in the past, he lived a pretty uh, wicked and uh, self-serving kind of a life. And uh, early on, someone helped him to harness all of those powers that he had to use them for good and for fighting crime. I mean, he has this tremendous energy and this tremendous power that can be used, and he has used it for both good and evil. And I think that it's something that he has to constantly keep his eye on because... Uh, we never see Cranston or, or the Shadow, interestingly enough, use the power once he's in, you know, now the way he is fighting crime. We never see him use the power for anything other than solving crime. It would work, but I think Penny has something that you can't fake and that you can't act. You know, she just has a great quality on screen. So um, I can't think of anybody else who could have played that part. I loved working with her, she's great. He has this terrible secret that he has to keep. And when he meets somebody that he can finally tell this secret to, because she has the same gift as him, this is a tremendous release for him. This is a great uh, opportunity for him. Finally a woman that he doesn't have to conceal anything from. In this movie, New York is a character in the movie, which I always love that, you know. Because New York, Cranston has New York wired in a kind of way, you know. He's got, like when you see that pneumatic tube scene, you know. New York has got, New York has got tubes and pipes and ramps and roadways and hidden things and all these nooks and crannies and crevices that Cranston and all of his people have completely mapped out. And, and, and they occupy that space a lot. So I think that there's a, there's a great... Uh, uh, there's a great uh, command of the city that these characters have that I think is a great element of the story. What intrigued me about it was two things. One was the, the, the script contained a great combination of action, adventure, fantasy, I suppose, if you like, and also uh, real deep emotions. Uh, and mixed in with that also some very sharp wit and humor. Uh, and it's just this wonderful balance of these sort of this thing going on. So one of, the, one of the great challenges in the film was to, to, to give this man a real life, uh, real emotions, and because he has, he has a major struggle within, within himself of fighting the evil within himself um, and using that evil within himself um, to basically manifest this state itself in, 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 as the shadow, which uh, fights for good. But he's not some you know, dopey do-gooder. He's... Uh, he's uh, when he's a shadow, you, know, the, he, you have to step back a little, you know, this, this, man, this man is a little, you know, uh, evil. Um, even though he's doing the right thing, there's a struggle in him, you know, so he's a little scary. It's a very big deal, it's a big deal for everyone. I mean, it's uh, Martin Bregman, the producer, has had this project for like 11 years. Um, and it's a great responsibility. Uh, we're doing a lot of things that have never been done before, um, and where we're really... Um, treading on ground so it's really a lot of the time it's like flying by the seat of our pants but I think everyone's like really in tune and uh, and uh, I think bringing out the best of their of their talents from all departments. Uh. Cranston's using the darkness to do good and I'm using the darkness to become more powerful and conquering the world and all that so it's a fantasy adventure full of intrigue and it's like uh, opera in its best sense so there's a lot of intensity 
and it takes a tremendous concentration from all of us in order to make the effect, to make the timing, to make the uh, drama that apparently it's, it's much bigger than life drama. This is not about your, you know, your next door neighbor struggling with some bills or disease. So this is quite fun in that sense. It's big, sumptuous looking and big production value and big character, like my character is rather spacious and, and consuming, rather big. And hopefully it's sort of fun looking at it because it's so serious. I, I do think uh, Alec is very exciting, a cinema actor, you know, he's so in such intensity and plus uh, charisma. He's just very exciting and most of all very manly. And this, this two character, but they're both very manly and very big and powerful. And I thought that was a great choice to have Alec play the shadow because he himself is so intense and so energized. You know, the battery never goes off on him. You know, he's, and, and I find that exciting to play opposite with. Evil and goodness all exist in us. It's up to us to make a choice where to go. In this case, Cranston Shadow's character has somehow gone to the heart direction and where I'm becoming a black hole. I become this incredible power, but basically collapse. It can never overshadow lightness. Light always overshadows darkness. So again, it has that underlying theme. But I hope we did it with a lot of energy and fun and colors and movement and entertaining, I hope, you know. Um, these, are, these are universal, uh, you know, um, indelible themes uh, about duality of nature and good and evil and the struggle to control your own spirit. Uh, I just think that's something that, uh, you know, goes back um, to the dawn of man and will always be around as long as man struggles with, you know, his own... Uh, spirit still in its early stages but in this case I sort of saw Alec Baldwin and um, from the very beginning you know three or four years ago and uh, it's just it's really unusual to get your uh, your first choice and uh, you know we were really lucky to do so and, uh, the thing that was tricky about the script is a lot of times the dialogue walks a very fine line between melodrama and reality and he's been uh, una absolutely unerring about uh, tiptoeing right down that line. And occasionally, it is a superhero movie about you know a madman who wants to conquer the world, so you're getting into some <laughs> kind of big drama there. Uh, and he's able to just lean over the line into melodrama and that sort of 30s serial adventure feel uh, and have fun with it without ever uh, giving the feeling that he's gone too far, that it's all campy now or we don't really mean it. Um, so he'll sashay right up to the edge of melodrama and then jump right back into reality. And uh, it's, per it's great, you get the best of both worlds. You get that sort of excitement and humor, but he still grounds his performance in very real human behavior. The, the movie is so visually spectacular. And then on top of that, there is the, the script, which has a real substance to it. And um, so it really had both things going for it. And it's really a great movie for people to escape and to get away and really sort of pretend that they're, you know, living these people's lives for a little bit or experiencing their world. And I think when she meets him, she sort of immediately has a connection with him, with Lamont Cranston, with Alec Baldwin's character. And I think she really sees that, uh, that she's really met her equal and she's met her match. And I think he sees it too, but he's threatened by her because he's afraid she's going to find out who he really is and uncover that he's indeed the shadow and nobody's supposed to know his other identity. So it's scary for him because he sees right away that she can read his thoughts and that she might find out. And Jonathan Winters is just on. He's just, someone pressed his button and it got stuck and he just, he won't quit. I mean, he's just, he's so funny and he's, uh, he's, he's amazing. He's really amazing. And he's, he's such a sweet man and he's so talented. He's just, he's a real comedic genius. And Well, I, I love doing period movies because I love the style of the period and the fashion and, and the dialogue's very witty and very sophisticated and uh, it's really fun to do a fantasy picture because everything is bigger than life. And Russell 
has a tremendous sense, you know, a tremendous sense of, of the look, of the visuals. He has a tremendous knowledge of the effects. He has an uncanny ability to, to create the image in his mind before he creates, before he puts it on stage. He's a director that comes to the stage knowing exactly what he wants to do. When he designs, with he along with the people that work for him, the, the designer of the film itself, he knows how he's going to shoot that from inception of design. And there are not many directors that have that ability. As a matter of fact, uh, there may be two or three in our whole industry, and he's one of them. The style of the film can be probably described most easily. And uh, for those who knew this composer, uh, would understand what I mean. And it, it has a feel and a look of Cole Porter. It has a richness of his music. It has a crispness kind of of his lyrics, you know. I mean, it's a very, very unusual film in terms of style, in terms of, of feel, in terms of texture, and also in terms of actors. We have stunning actors uh, in this. We got everybody that we wanted. We got everybody that we went after, which never happens. What appealed to me initially about bringing, making the shadow into a film was, was really the character of this, of this perfect, but not perfect, almost perfect, but not even almost perfect, slightly tainted man who does nothing but good. He's got an evil streak in him that's, that's substantially there. I mean, the key to this is, is, is a line that I'm sure we've all heard of, is what evil lurks in the hearts of man. Who knows? Well, the shadow knows. Well, how does he know? He knows because he kind of came from that. He was a bad dude at one point in his life. Uh, not that he's reformed. He's not reformed. He's been made over, but there's a vestige of evil in him. There's a vestige of danger in him that he's kept. That's what makes him a lot more interesting than all of the other characters that followed. I think without a doubt, when I did that scene in the Cobalt Room, that's one of the biggest sets I've ever walked on as a, a player and as a, a guy who's obviously working with a star and just the two of us and later on, as I say, uh, with uh, Margot and um, Penelope. When you see that many extras, you know that they're all made up at that period, as I were the 20s or 30s, and a full orchestra on the stage and these you know, huge uh, items that are, represent the Cobalt Club itself, this bluish atmosphere and, and, the, and the people dancing and uh, the waiter coming over and serving us one thing or another. It was a big thrill. It was a big kick for me. I enjoyed every second of that time that I had on that stage with him and with Penelope. Uh, it was it was a kick. It really was. Um, I would love to have had those powers. Those kind of powers would bring you the parts always that you wanted. But I think it's a fun film, and I think it's adventure. It's, uh, uh, hey, it's got romance in it. It's got the, the whimsy, but it's a, a combination of drama and, and, and a comedy. Uh, it's a little bit of everything, and I think that this is what's needed.